Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. Well, I guess uh, this is the last one for this year, so I thought I would try and uh, end it with an interesting fountain pen. And since I don't remember seeing any reviews on this uh, specific Hyundai and fountain pen, I thought that it would be a good fit. This is basically the more upscale version of the 1845, with um, a higher price as well. I actually stood on the idea of purchasing uh, this fountain pen since it was released and only after a year and a half or so I finally decided to pull the trigger on it. What is the main difference uh, between the regular um, 1845 and this uh, A1845 you may ask? Well, the uh, A1845 has the cap, barrel and section made out of uh, or covered in sterling silver is not plated but it at least actually has a sterling uh, silver uh, shell and uh, above that it also rocks a uh, 14 gold nib that is plated um, as a dual tone nib and is plated with rhodium and 24 uh, k gold uh, well at least based on the marketing material that i've been uh, reading from them if you would put uh, both pens side by side, uh, they look very similar in shape and size. As a matter of fact, you can easily swap parts between them and they will fit perfectly. Visually, the only difference seems to be the color and pattern on them, but uh, once you pick them up, there is a very notable difference in weight. The sterling silver version feels a lot heavier and uh, feels more robust than the brass version. For those of you that might not know, silver or sterling silver is heavier than brass and you can definitely feel it on this fountain pen. The clip is not a rocking clip um, as I like to call them, but they are uh, definitely spring based and uh, function quite smoothly. The cap can be removed um, by turning it about 4 turns. Uh, that is probably a lot of uh, turns for some, uh, something that doesn't really bother me, but definitely something to keep in mind. The cap doesn't screw quite smoothly though, and the inside plastic insert uh, threads, as well as the threads on the barrel, feel smooth and without any burrs that I can feel or see. The cap does post securely on both pens, but it does post more deeply on the regular version. At a closer look, the barrel on the sterling silver version seems to be a little bit thicker towards the top of the barrel and in combination with the square pattern on it, it makes it posting the cap a little bit more difficult. Something that in my case doesn't matter that much because I would never post this specific pen in fear to not damage the finish of the sterling silver. The section is very nice, quite grippy and textured. The big difference with the regular version is that the section doesn't seem to be covered in any type of lacquer, so it actually feels quite grippy and uh, you can feel the texture of it. On the regular version, the section is more slippery and it might be an issue if your hands tend to be more oily. Going uh, towards the nib, the nib size on this fountain pen is a number 6 and as mentioned on the A1845, we do have a 14k gold uh, nib finish and is plated dual tone with uh, rhodium and 24k gold. The nib is definitely beautifully finished and well polished. The only downside on it was the generic feed that was paired with and I thought it was just not right. So I uh, rectified that by uh, stealing the ebonite feed from the red Honda Young N8 and uh, retrofitted it to this pen. I did have to do some uh, fit setting using some boiling water, it was not a clean replacement. The tines on the nib uh, were spread apart a little bit, uh, with a pretty large gap for the extra fine nib that it is, but it was easily fixed by, well, heating the, by heat setting the feed. For the ink today I wanted something blue and um, as I was going through my inks I have found a bottle that was halfway empty and unused for quite a while actually. The uh, good old trusty Parker Quink Bloom. I thought it might be a good pair with this fountain pen and since I wasn't really remembering the last time I used this thing for drawing, I thought that maybe it's time to uh, 
wall, uh, shake the dust uh, out of it and, uh, and use it. After I decide to use it, I kind of hope deep down inside that this thing doesn't smudge because I wasn't remembering at that time if I ever had problems with the smudging. Turned out that actually was okay, I had no issues with it. One thing that hasn't disappointed me so far on any of the Honda and Phantom pens that I have uh, been uh, using um, is their names. This one is no exception either. The size uh, that I choose, as usual, it's an extra fine. And uh, oh man, this is definitely an extra fine nib. It actually feels finer than the nib on the Murex that I reviewed last week. In all fairness though, that one was more used uh, than this nib, probably. Reverse works just as good, a little bit more drier though than the uh, normal side of things, but still working and giving you a nice needlepoint-like line, which will be perfect for detail work if you plan to use it. And as a pleasant surprise, there seems to be a little bit of um, flex on this nib, not extreme, uh, I wouldn't even call it uh, semi-flex, but just enough to sort of uh, give some character to your line. Something that I actually um, kind of enjoy use it, uh, using it and it worked out pretty well for the drawing that I did. Overall, I have to say that uh, writing with it, it's a very ex positive experience uh, with this fountain pen and uh, I never really had any issues with it. So let's see how it will feel for a longer period of times after I do a quick-ish little scribble with it. For today's scribble I decided to do something that I haven't done so far, a feather. Simple, right? How hard can it be? I uh, actually used one of my photos as a point of uh, inspiration. Not sure what kind of feather it was or what type of bird do donated it. I managed to find it on Amazon a couple of years back, probably you can still find them, as part of an assortment of uh, craft feathers. I got them specifically with the intent to do a small photo shoot and uh, I did post some of them back then on my Instagram account. It was winter and uh, it was cold and I had no will to go outside, so I had to find ideas to shoot in the house. I've also 3D printed a few uh, mini vases and put them uh, and put the feathers inside of them for some nice mini feather vase setups. I had fun uh, when I did that and uh, I had the intention to try and do at least one drawing out of them, but somehow never got around it. So I guess this is the day and uh, since this is literally the last page from the paper stack that I've been uh, using for the past two years. Whatever the results uh, will be, this is it. I can't really redo it. So good or bad, I'm rolling with it and hope uh, I won't screw it up too badly. Speaking of pictures, I just realized that it might uh, take me a little bit longer than a week to prepare a new video on photography subject. It's going to take me a couple of days to take the pictures, then develop the film, scan it and then show the results. So I think it's going to take me a little bit longer than a week to come up with a new video on a photography subject. I'm still going to take two weeks uh, off time from making a fountain pen video reviews, but I will offset them by posting some quick drawing sessions on Sunday. I'm still uh, going to do some drawings, but I like to focus just on the drawings part and not so much on the fountain pens. And in parallel, I am going to work on the photo shoot and hopefully I will be ready with it at the end of the second week. In the first week, I think I will also be doing the same thing that I did last year. I will uh, build a collage with all the drawings that I have been doing over the years. Like uh, last year, I don't expect anyone to watch them. It's more like a mini celebration and reminder to myself that at least something was accomplished during the year that just passed. Probably it will end up just as long as the one from last year, seven hours or so. It doesn't matter, no matter how long it will be, that's how I will upload it. The other reason why I prefer to do this is because, well, I don't really have a strong opinion on what was the best fountain pen of this year or the worst. I think the experience for each other, it's quite um, different and uh, very personal. So. 
if I would call something that it's extremely good and that was like the fundamental of the year, doesn't mean everyone will agree with that assessment. So I think the best and the worst fountain pen of the year, it's a very personal choice. And um, I, have, I have no business in declaring that. Anyway, going back to today's fountain pen and scribble, I managed to finish the scribble faster than I was expecting. And since uh, I still had some more ink in it, I decided to do another quick little one. So I went again through the scrap papers that I've been collecting over the years and I was trying to see if I can find a piece of paper that I can rescue. And I actually found something that I think was a little bit better. I mean, the piece of paper was pretty used and quite bent and not in the best shape. But on one side of it, there was a sketch of a bird that somehow I never decided to go through and finish it. So I thought that this was the perfect opportunity. I don't remember why I never went with it. Probably I didn't like how the sketch lo looked like. But today I liked it, so I went for it. Again, I did not run for anything uh, realistic, but more for the fun of it and trying to use up all the ink in the fountain pen. Which I did, actually. I drew lines until the converter was completely empty. In the end, personally, I really enjoyed the fountain pen and I am glad it is part of my collection. One thing that I probably forgot to mention, it seems that these were a small-ish number production, but I think maybe a thousand pieces, maybe, made? I think, not 100% sure. All I know is that my number is 0416, but it doesn't say out of how many. It might as well be 9,999 pieces. I think you can still sort of find them from time to time if you search for it, in case you are interested, but uh, they're fairly rare, hard to locate them. In the end, I have to also admit that uh, a longer barrel on this fountain pen would have been a little bit nicer, or at least being able to post it a little bit deeper, and uh, without thinking that you're going to scratch the pen. And that is the only reason why I would probably not use it again for drawing, but for writing I would definitely use it without an issue. Quite comfortable as is even for my larger hands. The only thing that you might dislike is the weight of it. So if you didn't like the weight of the regular uh, 1845, you most probably won't like the weight of this one since it's a little bit heavier. Anyway, this is uh, me signing off for now and, uh, well, for this year, I guess. Wish you all Happy New Year and I will see you all in the next year. Hopefully with more and better content or material than this year, or at least the same. Enjoy the rest of the time-lapse and if you have any comments, please leave them below and I will reply to them as soon as I can. I wish you all the best and a wonderful day or night, wherever you are. Take care. Bye.